Using heat or steam to control weeds and crops can be an effective chemical-free method and is particularly useful for organic cropping farmers. However, it's an extremely energy-intensive operation. The Future Farming Centre at Lincoln is investigating an option that appears to offer good prospects for a one-pass control of weeds that would last the life of a crop for both organic and conventional producers. Looking globally, herbicides are, are starting to run into problems and the poster child for that at the moment is the United States. They got into herbicide resistant crops over there and they found, as they were told by a number of, of reed scientists, that in short order they, they've got a lot of herbicide resistant weeds. And very recently we've also had our first um, glyphosate resistant um, grass turn up in a Marlborough orchard. So looking globally, it's clear that the number of new chemicals, number of new herbicides coming into the system are very few and far between. We've got a growing resistance problem, and you kind of put that together along with a consumer's increasing dislike of agrochemicals, and you're going, we're only going to have less herbicide options in the future, not more. So we really need to start thinking about plan B and what, what plan B, how are we going to control weeds when the herbicides run out almost. What we're seeing now is many of the techniques that organic farmers and organic researchers developed over the last 30, 40 years are now of increasing interest to the mainstream. They realise herbicides are on the way out, and they're going, what's the option? And then you look over the fence at what the organic guys are doing and say, can we learn some lessons there? With organics, we've really got to take a system level approach. And it, it kind of sounds a bit airy-fairy, but it's just something simple like alternating between pasture and a cropping phase. That's a huge value in weed control and, and pests and diseases as well. And then you get down into the details, and it's things such as ground preparation, so doing things such as fallow and false seed beds, where you use tillage to, to exhaust the weed flush that comes through in the spring. And then you get down into the kind of more detailed work where we're using inter-row hoes and flame weeders as well. So it's, it's a, a whole range of things we use in organics compared to the kind of narrow focus on herbicides in a conventional. The inspiration has come out of organics, but I'm very much focused on the, the whole of agriculture and going, OK, if we start losing herbicides or when we start losing herbicides, what are farmers going to do? So I'm really looking at solutions that mainstream farmers can say, right, OK, I want to reduce my herbicide use or I haven't got a herbicide, what do I do? So I'm going, right, what tools can I develop that I can give to these guys when that happens and they can say, right, that's great, I can keep going. The current research I've been working on has got the rather fancy title of intro soil thermal weeding. And what, that's uh, an idea that was developed by a, a scientist called Bo Melander over in Denmark. And the idea is, is you j use, um, they're using steam and you heat a small slot of soil just within the crop row. So virtually all your arable and your vegetable weeds can only emerge from the top two, three centimetres of soil. If you hit, therefore heat the soil to about five centimetres deep, you'll completely eliminate the weed seed banks so and no weeds will come up. And to save fuel, what they do is they just do it in the crop row. So this is primarily aimed for vegetables at the moment. It completely eliminates the weed seed bank, so it's equivalent to a, a, a broad spectrum herbicide like glyphosate. It kills all the weeds. And it's highly reliable, like glyphosate is, or certainly used to be. Because you killed the weed seed bank, no weeds can come up out of that soil for the, essentially the whole life of the crop or until that soil's disturbed or new weed seeds go in. So you've got a residual period as long as your crop. And so even in Canterbury, we're growing vegetable seed crops with a 13 month life cycle. That crop row would remain weed free for 13 months. No herbicide can do that. There's no issues with the resistance. Everything is susceptible to enough heat and no chemicals are used and you can use it on any crop. This is done just before the crop's planted, literally a few hours before you can put the crop in so you've got this non-chemical technique that can actually outperform herbicides, broad spectrum, resistant, um, se selective for all crops, um, and uh, resi sorry, residual for the life of the crop. So it's a real doozer of a technique. We aim to start with a stale seed bed, get a strike of weeds, cultivate them very lightly, plant the crop, and then pre-emergence, just before the crop comes up, come through with the flame weeder, take out that first strike of weeds, and then from then on it's um, inter-row cultivation. The flame weeder takes out the weeds that are there at the time, but always there's subsequent weed strikes and it's not taking care of them. What you can see here, there's weeds have come up both in the row and between the rows, the crops grown up. Now in this situation, the sterilised strip would be where these onions are, there'd be no weeds in there at all. So we would be just 
operating between the row here. It would eliminate hand weeding, which with onions is the single biggest cost. It would lower the cost of the production of the onions. It can be a bit demoralizing, you know, for everyone really, if you, if you, if you just get those weed strikes wrong and you end up with an infestation and, you know, you kind of know you've got to get the crop, you've got to get them out. So um, it can just, you know, just spiral the cost. This is an absolutely typical flame weeder used by organic farmers all over the world. I've been doing some research looking at using hot air and the advantage of using hot air is A, it simplifies the machinery, but B, I can recycle the heat. The soil heating technique I'm developing, um, what we're doing is we're heating the soil itself. This doesn't heat the soil, just kills the weeds above the ground. You kill the weed seeds in the soil, that's the source of the trouble for weeds, that's where they come from. If you kill those, you don't have any more weeds. And that's the kind of real sledgehammer effect of this soil heating technique. I reckon if we can recycle that heat efficiently, we can dramatically reduce our fuel consumption and make this a technique that's going to be much more widely applicable. The next stage is to take the lab-based work I've done and turn that into working machinery. So that's, a that's engineering, so that's quite a bit of research, and so I reckon we need about 250,000. But I'm hoping with that, we might even in a couple of years actually have working machine, um, certainly proof of concept, final design, out there in the field doing the job and we can prove what kind of energy um, uh, we can save. The challenge is it's certainly at a, a practical farm level, this is precision stuff. We're talking about steaming a, a little slot of soil five, seven centimetres wide and you're only going to do that and get a seed back in that slot afterwards if you've got GPS. The recycling is, is the tricky bit. Um, in the field we've got to do a process really quickly if we're going to get decent work rates and that's quite an engineering challenge. The alternative that sounds a little bit crazy is to actually take the soil out of the field, process it and then put it back in. Uh, there's quite a bit of soil but it's only it's equivalent to about a, a decent potato harvest so farmers are geared up for moving big heavy stuff around so it's not something you'd do if you had an easier alternative but if you've run out of herbicides it's going to be your solution. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.